Hello and welcome. My name is Diet, and thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Today, I'm going to show you the project I'm working on, which was inspired by a raw image that I took with my DSLR. The Inspiration Catalog. Okay, so let's define this. It is a collection of the most inspiring digital photographs you've personally taken, printed out into a catalog. We all keep albums of images now on our smartphones. In fact, our smartphones are our digital diaries. So I encourage you to create a new album labeled Inspiration. The challenge here is to refine this down to 10 photos to print out. The images chosen should be the ones that spark creative juice. These are the raw images that I've taken on my DSLR, which are just sitting on my hard drive taking up space. I haven't done anything with any of these images, so it seems like a great way to start taking inventory. I have put together this album, which gives me the freedom to swap them out or add more as time moves on. Keeping them in a binder works just the same, as long as it's stored visibly in my art space somewhere, I can use this as a tool when I'm stuck. Now I have a backup plan for when I don't know what to draw next. So now that we've defined what the Inspiration Album is, I need to give it a great label. Please, if you have any ideas of what I should call this instead, like and leave a comment on this video with your suggestion. This is what I had prepped previously. This is the watercolor paper. This has already been gessoed. And then I created this um, transfer paper. In school, as part of our art fundamentals kit that we received, um, we were all given these rolls of tracing uh, paper. So um, I still have quite a bit yet left. I don't haven't used it for much of anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a nine by twelve um, sheet. And uh, the reason I'm choosing a nine by twelve is just because that's the size of the watercolor palette that I have here so we're gonna test this out and see what happens um, I have my Prismacolor uh, new pastels and I'm just gonna be taking the black and I'm gonna be covering the page in the black this kind of like protective layer over the top of it to keep it from getting into the light. And so like, as you can see it's, it's all completely flat, it's not creased or anything. That works pretty well. because I don't want it to transfer all over the place because look already my hands are full of it which is good so we'll see how this goes and the whole uh, part of the process that I'm trying to eliminate is um, normally I flip my images uh, when I print before I print them out I normally print them out as the mirror image so that when I transfer it because I would outline this with Conte and then flip it over and generally the black outline is dark enough that you can see it on this page and then I trace it again and the, that would transfer um, but the problem with that is if I forget to flip flip the image before I print it out um, and this happens quite often that um, I'd have to reprint it out again and what I'm trying to do is, is only print out one copy versus printing out several copies and that copy I'm hoping will work as um, 
the reference photo as well as the transfer photo as well as my color matching um, tester page um, so that way I'm not printing out so much unnecessary um, images. This is the other reason too why I'm scaling down versus uh, working on a larger canvas or a larger um, watercolor paper. I do have larger pads as well but um, right now I'm just trying to scale everything down so it's not as intimidating to work on. Um, just more manageable and um, yeah so I'm gonna see how this this goes. I think I'm gonna tape that down just to make sure it doesn't move on me while I'm Hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, this does what I want it to do. Someone had suggested just using a ballpoint pen. These are all printed out as an 8x10 in the event that um, I might want to frame them. Uh, depends on how it turns out, but um, I figured if I did it the conventional frame sizes, that way I can purchase a frame and, and hang it up easily if I if I choose to. In the past I've used soft pastels for this. I have black and white. Um, I believe I've also used charcoal and Conte, but it's been a while since I've touched Conte, so I'm not sure how well it transfers and how well it uh, can be painted over. I think the process of tracing the image is actually quite important because it does force you to look at every contour of the image that you're working with um, and uh, sort of train your eye to see each element that's there. This is great. Knowing that this is working is going to save me uh, a lot of time and energy. The other thing about working largely is I tend to scale up. I'll work on the image in Photoshop and get the composition of everything figured out, um, but I do work on it in scale in Photoshop. So if it's, you know, 24 by 36 or however large my canvas is, that's how large I'm working on it in Photoshop. And then when I print it out, I'm printing out a series of uh, pages. So then I have to retie all those pages together as one big transfer pa paper. And so as I mentioned before, if, I'm, if I forget to do the mirror image of that, I'm printing out like I don't know, sometimes 10 to 12 pages. Um, so that's the other reason why I wanted to go small and just keep it all to one page for, for now. in the paper or getting carbon all over, or not carbon, but uh, Conte all over the place. The Conte, as you can see, the Conte looks really well, it looks really good. I have this masonry board, which I kind of need as a backing for, um, for painting. The only problem with it is it, I don't know if you can see it so well, it gets wet and then it's like um, fuzzy. It picks up all of this fur and dirt and um, there's these fibers so if I'm not careful and I'm painting, I can paint those, I don't know if you saw that during while I was gessoing this, this page but some of the fibers from this were picking up on the brush and, and pulling into my image. And the tape, as you can see, 
doesn't want to stick to it either because those fibers are there. I don't know, I have to find a different solution, but I do like the clip on this cord. Here we go. Mm, let's back up. Yeah. There we go. You are hungry? Are you hungry? Yes. He stands here when he's hungry because that is where the cat food all is in this cupboard. So he's very verbal. It tells me exactly when he's ready to eat, which is generally the same times every day. So first thing in the morning when we wake up, he likes to wake me up. Usually by 9.30 if I'm not up, then he's yapping at me like this. <laughs> yes. And then also around 3, 3.30ish, that's when he gets ready to eat. Yes. So I thought I'd lay out all of my uh, acrylic paints so you can see what I have to work with. Um, I do prefer the Liquitex heavy body paints. That's kind of um, the uh, part of our basic kits when we were in school so I've just become accustomed to using these as my preferred acrylic, preferred choice of acrylics to work with. Generally when I'm working with my acrylics this is sort of how I lay them out in sort of this color scheme so that I can mix, see, see all of the colors that I do have and um, mix them to obtain the color match for whatever it is that I'm trying to paint. Just so you have an idea of my workspace, there's Mr. Basil. I've got my water set up over there. My painting space. All my colors and my reference photo. So one thing I am going to do differently here is I am going to start with the background. Um, I do want to start working from background to the foreground because um, I think it's just going to help me as I get into like more of the landscape photos that I showed earlier. Um, normally I would just I I'd. Uh, uh, paint the subject and then go in afterwards and just fill in the background. So in my backgrounds I do want to gray them out so they're not as saturated. And I think because this is watercolor pa paper versus uh, painting on a canvas I am going to make this uh, a little more um, watered down than I normally would on a canvas. So the paint's not going to be quite as thick. Titanium white, Mars black, cobalt blue, burnt umber, light green permanent, light emerald green, the emerald green, yellow light Hansa. I'm trying to look for the sort of the medium value. I prefer to use a paper palette when I'm working with acrylic paints. The paint tends to dry quickly and can destroy a palette, so the disposables work well for me. When I work on larger canvases, I use the long handled brushes. I'm still getting used to these short handles, but with the smaller painting and because I'm working over top of my image versus using an easel, the long handle would just become uncomfortable to work with. I'm gonna lose daylight soon, so um, I wanna try and, and get as much of this color blocked out as I can. And I'm constantly looking at my uh, reference image as well, just to 
make sure I'm on the right track. And I'm really not liking this pressure on these edges. I'm not used to laying this flat while I'm working. At this stage, I've been at this for a while, pretty much all afternoon and into the evening. I can already tell that there's a lot more work that needs to be done, so the last thing I want to do before packing it in is to re-transfer the center of the flower. As I was trying to paint, I realized that I didn't actually understand what parts of the flower I was looking at. I want to spend some more time studying what the inside of this bloom looks like so that I can have some more confidence in my brush strokes. Leaving this project unfinished with the sketch lines visible is a way to remind me of what the issue is and a way to outline my next step in this painting if I choose to continue. In hindsight, I should have painted the background last and instead started with the flower. I ran out of steam. Ultimately, that's the reason why I didn't complete this image. I spent so long at this that by the time I reached the focal point, I was tired of looking at it. At the very least, this painting requires a second sitting with fresh eyes, so I'm a little torn. I want to move forward with something that's not acrylic paint, yet I would also like to see this finished. So for now, I'm going to leave it this as is and move on to the next piece. I have been eyeballing alcohol markers for some time and I have finally made a purchase which I will reveal in my next video. Thank you for watching.